I don't know, what a way to start off the video, hitting my funny bone. What's going on everyone, Precog here, and today I wanted to talk about the idea of detail in audio. I think we've all heard terms like detail retrieval, resolution, true detail, being thrown around by both reviewers and hobbyists alike. But have you ever wondered what it means when someone says, hey, this IM sounds more detailed than this other IM? Now, it might seem relatively straightforward, but I think we need to ask ourselves whether we can actually trust a statement like this and whether it actually has value. So in this video, I will be breaking down my opinion of what qualifies the idea of quote unquote true detail and how we can correlate it back to frequency response. So this will be a mixture of both supposition and fact, and a lot of the ideas that I'm going to be talking about in this video can also be applied to other subjective qualities like imaging, soundstage, and dynamics. Okay, so the first thing that we need to establish is that everything about detail starts back with our own hearing, which is going to be different for everyone. And this difference is going to be based on two main factors, one of which is going to be HRTF, and I will come back to this later, and the second of which is going to be the audible spectrum. Let me explain what the audible spectrum is. So we measure sound by two variables, which are frequency and amplitude. The audible spectrum is the range of frequencies that we are able to hear. And when it comes to the average person, this covers a range from 20 hertz at the bottom all the way up until 20,000 hertz at the top. 20,000 hertz is a little bit generous, I think, for most average adults. Um, I myself can only hear up until around, I want to say 17 or 18,000 hertz. Um, and this ability will definitely diminish over time. And this is why a lot of older listeners, for example, can sometimes struggle to hear sounds like high-pitched noises. Now, when it comes to musical content itself, musical content has a broad spectrum that falls both within and outside of this range. When you hear a cymbal strike, for example, the bulk of that sound is kept at around like five to 10K Hertz, but the end of the note itself can carry up until 20K Hertz and even further than we can hear. But the thing is many IMs can't capture the entire audible spectrum for humans to begin with. Generally speaking, most IMs are very competent at the mid range frequencies, which are, for example, where vocals tend to fall in. When it comes to like the airiest notes at the high end, that's where IMs really tend to struggle. We would generally call this a roll off, which is when the frequencies sort of well, they roll off. And sometimes an IM can actually produce these frequencies quite high. They're just not loud enough. They don't have enough amplitude for us to actually hear them. And when there's a disconnect between what we hear in real life and what an IM is capable of reproducing, that's what we associate with a loss of detail. So a simple example of this is if an IM is only capable of producing sounds up until 10K Hertz. If you listen to a piece of music that has an instrument that goes all the way up until 15k Hertz, it's going to sound muffled on that IM, assuming we were a person with average hearing, of course. And I want to point out that you don't have to have heard specific instruments to know that something is missing when it comes to an IM's extension. And this is because in everyday life, we hear everything up to the limits of our audible spectrum, which again, if you're the average person is 20 Hertz to 20k Hertz. Now take something as simple in everyday life as the sound of someone's voice or a finger snap. The bulk of these sounds is reproducible by most IMs. However, as research and measurement tools have become better over time, it's become increasingly clear that the highest frequencies as well, up until 20K Hertz and even higher, are part of these sounds as well. And this is especially true of female voices and fricatives, which are basically sharp consonances. So assuming we're someone with average hearing again, we're going to instinctively feel like something is missing from IMs when they lack extension. So if you want a case example of how this sort of plays into the idea of differences in perception of detail retrieval, let's say we have two IMs. The first IM has extension all the way up until 20K Hertz. And then the second IM, it sounds identical up until 10K Hertz, but then at that point, it basically just rolls off. So when it comes to someone with average hearing, they're probably gonna hear these two IMs and they're going to hear the IM, IM2, that rolls off after 10K Hertz as being quite muffled and just grainy sounding in general. Now, let's say we take someone who's maybe a bit older and their hearing isn't quite as good. In fact, it rolls off after 10K Hertz or so. They are really not going to hear much of a difference between these two IMs, if at all, when it comes to detail. And that's because their hearing in the first place can't go over 10K Hertz and hear those 
frequencies above that, which the first IM can produce. Now you're probably wondering what other implications does this have? And one of the biggest ones that comes to mind, at least for me, that I've seen time and time again, is when someone buys a new IM and then they suddenly start hearing sounds that they think they haven't heard before. This is an experience that I think a lot of listeners correlate with the idea of detail retrieval or an IM's ability to bring forward the smallest details in a track. But here's the thing, assuming an IM has good extension on both ends of the spectrum up until our audible spectrum, it's more likely that that detail was always there and you always heard it, you just never noticed it. And a lot of the time this becomes really apparent when you take your old IM and you compare it against the new IM and you'll realize that that detail was there all along. Now a common reason why we hear these new sounds is because of the placebo effect. When we buy something new, obviously we want it to sound better, so it's only natural that we start listening harder and sometimes we even fool ourselves into thinking we heard something new. Now leaving aside the placebo effect, this experience can also be attributed to the idea of auditory masking. And the simplest example that I can think of when it comes to auditory masking is if you add too much bass into an IM's frequency response. When you add in too much bass, it begins to skew the frequency response and by comparison, it'll make the mid-range and the treble sound further away, even though those frequencies are technically there. And just by being virtue of further away in the mix perceptively, it sounds, it's a lot harder for those sounds to come through and it's a lot more difficult for us to pick up on those small details in those frequencies. And a good example of this, I guess, is the Elysian Diva. And I use this as an example because it has a bass pot which only modifies the bass response of the IM. Everything upwards from the bass is kept identical between the settings. However, if you try it on the minimum setting or the middle setting, it's going to sound more detailed than it does on the maximum bass setting. And it's just because of that reason I outlined where the bass is pushing down your perception of the mid-range and treble frequencies. Now, if you want to take this idea to a more quote unquote advanced level or a more granular level, I think that's a better description. Peaks, individual peaks and valleys can have an effect on how we perceive the rest of the frequency response as well. And probably the best example of this is the 64 Audio U12T, where the 5K Hertz peak, while it might look sort of alarming at first glance at the measurements, it doesn't actually present itself as being like peaky in practice. And this is because there's an additional peak at 15K Hertz that serves to balance out that peak at 5K Hertz. And it's the same idea with the Delta at 8K Hertz on the U12T that basically serves to emphasize the 15K Hertz peak and the 5K Hertz peak by comparison. Okay, and the U12T sort of leads me into one of my possible hot takes, one of my opinions on what qualifies detail, which is the idea that coloration is detail. I think that a lot of people have this conception that IMs are getting better every year, they're getting more detailed every year, and at least we would certainly have this impression if we were going by what the reviews say. However, as someone who has heard hundreds of IMs, I've literally heard like, I think over 400 IMs at this point, and I've heard many IMs with very good extension on both ends of the spectrum. So they have great sub bass and they have great upper treble, and they pretty much go up to the limits of our hearing, or my hearing at least. And more often than not, I have found that differences in detail between these IMs are more closely a case of this is different rather than this actually sounds more detailed. And this is where my theory comes into play. I think that our perception of detail is not based solely on what we hear in real life or what we might call a neutral frequency response in IMs. I think that tasteful colorations to frequency response can enhance a sense of detail retrieval to our ears. And the easiest example of this is really a controlled sub bass shelf. If you've ever heard a controlled sub bass shelf, a lot of the times I think it can actually sound more detailed than a flat bass shelf. And the reason for this is because it just stands out more. So you're gonna focus more on it. And really the key word here is tasteful. When adjustments to frequency response, when they go too far into left field, they start coming across as artificial to us. And that's when we start saying maybe the sound, the overall timbre of the, um, of the IM is plasticky, metallic, or anything of that nature. But basically this explains why there is also a subset of listeners who can hear an IM with very poor treble extension and that sounds nothing like it does in real life and think it sounds more detailed than an IM with good treble extension. A lack of treble extension creates like a sense of graininess to notes if you've ever heard it. And there are some listeners out there that to them that is a tasteful coloration. They perceive it as extra detail. 
Okay, let's talk about the idea of reading resolution from a graph. This is something that can definitely be done and it takes years of practice. You also have to have golden ears. You have to hear above 20K Hertz. <laughs> okay, this is a pretty common misconception and it is, it is true to a very small extent and a quote unquote read will usually fall into one of two buckets. One, the frequency response is super scuffed. There is almost zero extension in the treble and we can say this IM probably does not have good resolution. And then two, we don't know how the resolution of this IM will sound. And you can see that in both of these cases, by no means can we say concretely the resolution of this IM. And the reason for this, one again, is that audible spectrum, but two, and I said I would come back to this, it's HRTF, which stands for Head Related Transfer Function. Okay, so let me explain what HRTF is. When we hear a sound, we don't hear those sound waves one-to-one -one from the source there are a lot of effects that our body has on altering those sound waves by the time they reach our ear canal. The shape of your ears, the shape of your head, your body weight, for example, these are all factors that influence those sound waves before you actually hear them. And sure, there are general similarities that people will have when it comes to their HRTF. And a good example of this is why we have that you know, rise to the pin again at around 3K Hertz on most IMs and headphones. But at the end of the day, everyone's HRTF is going to be unique. And you have to remember that your HRTF and your audible spectrum, these are continuous values that can change over time. The takeaway here is that it is impossible to read resolution from a graph because resolution is contingent on these moving values, which can change. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? What's the too long didn't watch of this video if you wanna to skip to this part? The takeaway is that true resolution doesn't exist. It's going to be highly subjective and it's always going to depend on the individual. Now you're probably thinking, holy crap, that's such a cop-out answer. Like you can't just slam us with this right at the end of the video. And I will give you guys a little bit of, um, I don't know, saving grace here, a little bit of reassurance that there is some, some sanity to this response. And I think the best way of sort of illustrating this is with the saying that there are no wrong answers, but some answers are definitely more correct than others. So in a similar vein, there are definitely IMs that I can say with a greater amount of certainty are more detailed than other ones for most listeners. But I will never be entirely correct for every listener, only myself. And even when it comes to myself, I am perfectly happy to admit that a lot of the times I struggle to tell whether I think one IM is more detailed than another IM. Anyways, I hope this video helps explain why you probably shouldn't take a lot of these statements that you hear at face value. Um, don't blindly trust the reviews. Don't blindly trust what everyone says. At the end of the day, you really have to hear things for yourself. And I hope this video has explained a lot more about why that is the case. If this video was informative, be sure to drop a like and maybe subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Precog out.